Hey everyone, so this is an introduction to my landscape photography presets. Uh, once you get them imported, you're going to find them under the presets panel when you're in the develop module. And these are organized in a way that um, they're meant to be used in order. So that's why they're numbered. And another thing to note is that each number, so like one, two, three, that is actually considered to be options. So anything that falls under number two, you would select one of these options. So they're not intended to be used together. They're just um, meant to pick one because they actually overwrite the settings from each other one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click on the reset preset, which uh, just sets everything to zero. So if you had already made some changes, that just puts everything back. So because these presets are really intended to be used on their own, and then you can tweak them afterwards, but you don't wanna start with other settings. The first thing you want to do is under number two, this is where, how you select your scene. You know, you have low contrast, medium contrast, and high contrast. And that's not what you're going to end up with. It's what your scene, what your starting scene is. So a good way to determine this is to look at your histogram. And, you know, everything on the left side is your shadows. In the middle is your midtones, And on the right is your highlights. So we're looking at this data. And we want, if this is really spread out, like in this image, we have a lot in the shadows, a little bit in the midtones, and we do have some of the highlights. So this is a fairly high contrast scene. What I can do is come in here and try these different presets. So I'm going to start and look at the medium contrast and see how that looks. I don't like that one too much. That one I really don't like. This one looks really good. And then this high contrast is for dark shadows. Uh, kind of like that, but looking a little bit dark. And this one's for light shadows. Really doesn't work with this image. So I'm going to select this high contrast scene. And even that just gets us a really good starting point. Everything looks pretty good. Um, next, under number three, uh, this is just to darken up your image. Um, typically, we try to expose to the right. So our images tend to look way too bright in Lightroom once we bring them in uh, because of that. So this is a good place to bring that down. In this case, I... I'm already pushed to the left quite a bit just because it was such a high contrast scene that I was trying to get everything into one. Um, so I'm not going to use these on this particular image. Um, with number four, this is not highly used, but on some images it might produce a good effect. Uh, basically what it's doing is it's going to create, um, it's going to put like blue in your shadows to kind of cool them down. Sometimes this looks good, but I'm going to undo that on this image because I don't like the effect here. And then also this one, um, it cools down the shadows and warms up the highlights. So again, sometimes it works, not on this one. And then under number five, this is for a vignette. Pretty simple, just a little subtle one, medium, strong, or a really heavy one. In this case, I'll go with the medium vignette. Actually, it's both strong. And then under number six, this is for your sharpening and noise reduction. So if you have a really high detail scene, I'd recommend using this one, um, but it has to be like pure detail. It's, it adds a lot. And this, um, this works very well for uh, Fuji cameras. But for other cameras, I would generally recommend using the standard landscape. And that's really all you need to do. You'll have to zoom in to see the effect of that. And then under section seven, this is what I call my color boosters. And I've named these based upon what I've found they work well for, um, but you'll just have to play around with them and see what effect they have. So if I click one of these, you can see in this case that doesn't work well at all. It's way too saturated and gross. But you can play around with these and see what looks good to you. Um, I might try this haze glow. That's a subtle effect. Kind of like that one. A yellow leaf glow might work well on this. Um, I found these work really well on fall color images, sometimes like really overcast conditions. It really draws the color out. It works really well for that. And if you say select one that you don't like, and you're kind of going through them and you forgot to undo, then 7.2 is just a reset for this specific section. So it just resets your colors back to a baseline. That's really the basics of it. I'll uh, run you through a couple more images just so you can see how they work. So this one's already been edited, so I'm gonna reset that. And you can see how kind of dull this looks. I mean, it's a very vibrant scene to start with, but um, you can see how the shadows are really dark and it's just kind of, kind of blah. 
this is a really high contrast scene again so i'm going to start by trying that out that looks pretty nice dark shadow is not going to work so well on this one because it's we have such dark shadows light shadows uh, that might be pushing it a little far i kind of like it yeah i think i'll go with that one extreme high contrast that that's for kind of weird situations. I don't use that one very often. It gets kind of flat and dull, so I'll stick with this one. And in this case, I might try darkening this a quarter stop. Yeah, I like the way that looks. And then I might try the cool shadows and see how that works. You can see how that, if I undo that, you can see like in here how this really adds to the blue of the water and it adds some blue in the shadows here. So you can see how that adds really nice effect to this image. Cool shadows, warm highlights. Mm, really couldn't see much of a difference on that one. So then I'm just going to add a little vignette. Let's see, I'll try the medium vignette. And then I'm going to, I'll zoom in and turn on my, try the high detail landscape for this one. That looks pretty good. And then on this one, I am not even going to touch the color boosters because it's already such a vibrant image. I mean, it was an incredible sunset. So I'm just going to leave that one alone. And as far as global adjustments go, I'm done with this image. You can see before and after. Boom. Real easy. Um, so now I'm going to show you this fall color image. Let me just reset that. And you can see in the histogram, because the data is not spread out, it's all concentrated right here that this is a very low contrast scene. So I'm going to try these low contrast settings first and see how they look. Okay, that looks pretty decent. Overall, I think the image is too bright, so I'm going to darken it up a little. The cool shadows might work well on this one. Yeah, because then it adds this kind of blue tinge to the trunks of the aspens. And might try the warm highlights. No, that one doesn't look very good, so I'm going to stick with that one. And then I'll add a little vignette again. Just a subtle vignette. And then this one's a very high detail landscape, so I'll definitely use that preset. And now is where the color boosters really come into play. So for this one, overcast fall color glow, probably going to work pretty well. Or maybe the yellow leaf glow. Yeah, I kind of like the way that one looks. So that's that's really it. We got a good image there. So this image, come back up and reset this. And you can see how flat and dull it looks. Typical raw file. Not what you saw at the scene. So I'm going to try... Again, looking at the histogram, there's a lot of data on the edges, so I would consider this pretty high contrast. You know, you've got really dark shadows here, and you've got really bright highlights in the sky. So I'll try high contrast scene, pretty good. Dark shadows, that's pretty decent. And light shadows is pushing it too far in this image. So I'll just go with the high contrast scene. And in this case, don't think darkening it is going to work. Uh, it looks okay. It might be a little bit too far. I'll just undo that. And I'm going to... I don't think the cool shadows will do. No, it doesn't look good on this image. So I'm just going to add a medium vignette. High detail landscape. And actually, I think this was taken with a cannon. So that might be pushing it a little too far. So maybe we'll do the standard landscape on that one. And then the color boosters is where this is really going to shine. So I have these four different sunset presets here. They all do different things. So you just want to go through and try them and see what happens. A little bit of boost. That one is dramatically different. Kind of like that one. Yeah, I think I'll stick with this one. So there we go. We got went from this to this. And you can see how the, the lens distortion also changes. And that's because I have that turned on automatically. Under lens corrections, I have the enable profile corrections on. So if you have a lens with a profile, it's going to automatically apply that. And I also have remove chromatic aberration turned on. So all those are going to be automatically fixed for you. You might want to go back and check them if you're using different lenses, but overall this should work really well. So we ended up with that. All right, so now I'm going to show you the local adjustment presets. Um, these are going to be found under the adjustment brush or the graduated filter or even the radial filter. Mostly what I use these for is the adjustment brush. Um, you just click on this brush here to open that up. And you'll find the presets under the effect drop down. So it's probably going to say custom to start with. But if you just click on that and then down here you'll find the, the ones that are prefixed with EE. 
for exploring exposure. These presets, I've tried to create them to emulate the way luminosity masks work. And of course, they're not going to be the same, but it's the closest I could come in Lightroom, and I think they work fairly well. The thing with the way that I use luminosity masks in Photoshop is I select certain tonal ranges and only brush my burning and dodging into those certain areas. For example, if I was to brush in, you know, if I was just to burn or darken the this shadow area, if I just did that with the, the normal burn uh, preset, then what's going to happen is, let me turn my flow up so you can see this, it's going to darken everything. So the areas that are already really dark get even darker, so they turn pure black real quick. So I'm just going to delete that. So with my presets, um, I've set these up so you have burn, dodge, different areas of the image. So if I wanted to burn or darken just the shadows, I'm going to select burn shadows. And this gives me a whole different array of um, settings for my preset. And I'm going to bring the flow down on this some. And now you can see when I darken that, the darkest areas don't get too terribly dark. You know, they still get darker, but not in the same way they, as they do with the normal preset. So I'm going to delete that one. So I have different ones here for midtones as well. So if I wanted to darken a certain area in the midtones, it's going to try to just affect the midtones and not affect the really bright highlights or the dark shadows. So it works pretty effectively for that. I'm just going to delete that. Um, and then if I wanted to darken any highlights, I would use this one. So if I wanted to darken up this mountain peak up here, see how it brings that area down a little bit without affecting the uh, shadows too much. Kind of brush over into the shadows and it's not going to really affect it all that much. It's still good to use the auto mask with a lot of these. Um, you'll want to try with and without. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't. So on the same thing with the, if I click on new and select, um, so dodging is brightening up. So if I want to brighten the highlights, um, this is really important to make your images pop because the highlights are really what make an image sing. So if I brighten up just my highlights and I'm going to reduce my flow some and just brighten up these areas that are already have nice light on them. So you can see how that really lightens that up and it's pretty nice effect. And I'm just going to apply it lightly to some of these areas where I want to bring more attention to. And I might add a little bit to these trees in here. Just adding to the light that's already there. Just to enhance a little bit to uh, bring it back to what you saw. Because cameras do not record the same thing that we see with our eyes. So we do need to add this little bit of post-processing to bring it back to our original vision. Other ones we have in here, um, created this one for the Orton effect. And this kind of adds a little glow to your highlights. Um, so you, you only want to paint this onto your highlights. You don't want to apply it to the entire image. Um, that's really where it's meant to be applied. So if I paint this into the highlight areas, you can see how it adds a little glow. And you have to go really subtle with this one. Um, but it, it can have a really nice effect. Uh, but remember to keep it to constrained to your highlights and keep it really subtle. So you want to go with a low flow. And then finally, we come to create a new one again. Um, I have these ones called background, foreground, and midground. And what these do is it tries to create an atmospheric effect. So for the background, if I paint this in, I might have to raise the flow a little to, so you can actually see this. But it actually brightens it up a little bit and lowers the contrast. That's what you want to see in the background because that's how it mimics um, the natural atmospheric effects. And then I can create a new one for the midground. Oops, the midground. And I have 
too high of a flow on that one, so I'm going to undo that and reduce this around 10 and just add a little bit of that effect in there. Don't need much on this image because it's so bright there already. So then I'll click new and create one for the foreground. And this is going to add some detail to your foreground and a little bit of contrast. So we can see this is where we started with the image without any local adjustments and and this is where we ended up. And it's not exactly where I would take it, it was just kind of an example of the brushes. So now I'll actually um, take it on a different image. Okay, so this image will be a better example of how those foreground, midground, and background work. So I will start with the background and I'm just going to brush that into this area up here. And I'm going to need a little more flow on this one. See how that kind of lightens it up and it makes it look like there's atmosphere back there. But the camera kind of renders it pretty flat. So here you can see the before and after with that. And then I'll click new and select mid-ground. And I'm just going to brush that into this area. See how it's brightening it up a little bit. Just adding some pop to that area. And then I'll click new again and select my foreground and just brush that into this area up front. So now you can see what we had before. It's kind of flat, a little too contrasty. And then with those local adjustments, it kind of brings everything together. And now if I wanted to do some more local adjustments with burning and dodging, so if I wanted to, let's say we add a little Orton effect to this little hill right here. You can see how it adds a little bit of glow to that and just makes it stand out. And I'll just add it subtly to certain areas. That was not subtle. Undo that. So when doing this burning and dodging, you usually want to use a really low flow on your brush. So some somewhere around 10. And then just subtly add that in. So that looks pretty good. And then if I wanted to do any more burning and dodging, so if I wanted to um, darken up my foreground, I could select burn shadows, uh, take a little attention away from this area. Okay, so now you can see before without any local adjustments and after. It's quite a dramatic difference. So that really wraps it up. I hope you guys really enjoy these presets and it really gives you some stunning images. And I really appreciate any donations you can give since I give these totally free. Um, any help is really appreciated. So thank you guys.